Here we are with Overlord Season 4 Episode 6 And yeah, last episode we went to the dwarves More or less, I mean, we found one dwarf And then we found out from the wolf things, which names I forgot what they are called That they attack the other dwarves So that's where we are going now And we will see how that turns out But yeah, if you like what you see, leave a like, subscribe or comment Let me know what you think And I would say let's get to the episode Immediately to the other dwarf. I guess Kokoa already attacked. Ooh, magic defense item. I mean, yeah, I guess the dwarves specialize specialize on magic items, right? From runes, making sacrifices. <laughs> In the nick of time. Which is interesting that they can use magic, right? Because normally, you know, dwarves more as like, not affiliate with magic, right? Like not being good with magic, more like physical and crafting. An undead appeared. <laughs> yeah, he teleported, I guess. Because what we heard from last episode, it takes six days to get there. They captured. Oh, there he is. Oh my god. So intimidating dating with his aura. I mean, he gets information. <laughs> I want to establish a relationship. And thus, I made I made I might be able to help you. He doesn't need his kingdom. He can do it himself. <laughs> so that's why they attack. They want the minerals. Are those maybe the ones that we captured last episode? Or is there more? Is Eins coming? Is Eins doing it himself or... No. Wrong. And they die. <laughs> and the arm is gone. What is that? Oh, a death knight. He looks, he looked way bigger than I, he looked way bigger than normal. How many, how many? Two maybe? Man, they are, they seem so big compared to those. I guess they are just as big as dwarfs. <laughs> Giant dwarfs. <laughs> I guess they don't know death knights. I guess they're just used to dwarfs. Oh my god, getting sliced in half. I guess that's very durable rope. Maybe magical enhanced rope. He must be strong because he has his red fur. He... Oh, I thought he would sacrifice himself, but I don't think so. <laughs> he throws him! <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if the Death Knights survive that and come back up again somehow. I guess he gets some information like straight. To his head. Oh ho. Oh. <clears throat> okay, I see, I see. He maybe he can sense it if his death knights die. But he can't sense what exactly happened. He just sensed they're gone, right? And now he thinks, oh my god, two death knights that so far had like no problems anywhere got defeated at the same time. So he's like wondering, oh, is there something, is there someone that is very strong? <laughs> but in reality, they just got killed by fall damage, basically. <laughs> no. <laughs> Overthinking things. But I mean, you have to be cautious, right? You can't just think, yeah, that must be nothing. That must be just a coincidence. I think Shaltia would have liked it if he would sit on her. Runes. 
Blacksmiths. But yeah, who knows if they find another way, right? Oh, they can mobilize again and try to breach it again. <laughs> and just wipe him out. <laughs> Is that even possible? <laughs> That's maybe like one spell of irons and he would wipe them all out. <laughs> Frost dragon. A dragon? Huh, that sounds interesting. Now I want to definitely do it. <laughs> I think they didn't hurt. I think they didn't hear all the... Stuff about him. Of course, booze is a metaphor. Oh. Yeah, right. That makes no sense. He wants the good stuff. He wants the exclusive stuff. Freshly made. I guess that's still a high price even if they don't use runes that much anymore. I mean, he basically offered to reclaim your kingdom and get rid of all the enemies, right? So, sounds like a good deal. And he doesn't want to be, sl he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to enslave you. He just wants the runesmiths, which you don't really use anymore since you go for magic items. <laughs> they are shocked. <laughs> How can you drink with a body like that? Can I see them from outside? That would be funny. And he doesn't want to do you as slaves. So, it's supposed to be a friendly relationship. <laughs> they don't have much choice, right? Shouldn't be a problem. You're welcome. I mean, it's supposed to be a friend friendly relationship, right? Who? What? But I don't plan to create people like Hero Hero Son in my kingdom. Who's Hero Hero Son? Yeah, I mean, take the Runesmith dwarves, right? Get them into your country, treat them good and fair. I mean, that's what he wants to do, anyways, right? He wants a kingdom where people want to be ruled over, so. He has to treat them good. And then when they come and visit, they hear all the good stories like, hey, we are getting treated here really good and we like to work here, blah, blah, blah. And bam, profit, right? But yeah, basically nothing really changes for Irons, right? It's just stuff that he plans to do anyway. <laughs> More for you guys. So just appreciate that there's one guy left that wants a boost. And there he is. <laughs> uh, shall Tia show steal the show? <laughs> Move your asses to my kingdom and work for me. Easy. Oh. I guess this must be a really good one. The, the funny part is for Eins, this is probably just like some random item, right? Just one item that has runes, but for them it's like, oh my god, this is amazing. How can we do that? That's so much better than what we have. <laughs> That's what their response is maybe, or what they think, and they're like, okay, we want to learn this. <laughs> <laughs> and here he has his chance. 20 runes. Impossible. I guess they have to learn how to improve. Like Nephilia. Which would make his kingdom so much more stronger if he could do that. I mean, it's only normal for like a person that is like really into something to see something that is like very impressive, that seems impossible and to see it as like a challenge to improve yourself, to get to that level. 
get that stuff done, right? It's like just to, you want to get to the next stage, the next floor, the next step, and just improve yourself and be the best you can do in your craft, right? I mean, not really. It's, I, I guess it's just like because he wants to help them reclaim the old royal capital of the dwarves, right? So they kind of had to do it. Yeah, but I'm just like, yeah, they might have, but I don't. Gondo? Yes. Oh, he wants that. <laughs> kind of true, they have no use for it, right? If they don't have any runesmith anymore. <laughs> I mean, in, in the end, it just helps Eins. <laughs> yes, mass fly. How convenient. Does Eins realize that they maybe fall down? He still thinks that way. <laughs> She grabbed, but hey, it's it's nice. It's it's a nice touch, right? Normally, characters just grab behind the back and pull something out, right? Here, she gets it out of her ribbon. So that's a nice touch that you see where she actually gets it from, not that it seems like she just pulls it out of her ass or something. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't realize what happened. True. Is Aura like... I don't smell death knights here. <laughs> Aura probably wanted to say that there was no death, death knight on the side, probably. That she didn't smell one. That's my guess. <laughs> Indeed. I'm interested in the dragon. From wow, they really cut it out straight from season one with the background music and everything, <laughs> and the credits on the side. Oh no, this is the oh, this is the ending theme from this. Okay, and the okay, 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 yeah, okay, my my bad fail. Okay, this was the episode. Let me know what you think about this episode. But I think it was more like. A slow episode, not much action, not really anything really. It was just like a bit of progression towards Ayn's dream of having like more relationships and building his kingdom, right? A little bit of progression there because Ayn's now basically is did an agreement with the dwarves and is like, okay, here I help you regain your royal capital and deal with the wolf things. I forgot the names again. And in exchange, I get all your runesmiths and they come to my kingdom and do rune crafting for me. Uh, and that's basically all that happened really in the episode, right? Um, but I mean, it is interesting again that <clears throat> we saw like Gondo being like, okay, they have given up on rune crafting, right? But what he didn't know and what Eins didn't tell told him is that they didn't have really a different a different choice, right? They basically had to agree because it's basically either Eins helps uh, helps them to regain their royal capital and deal with the wolves thingies, whatever, or nothing, right? So they basically had to do it because the dwarves couldn't do it by themselves. They would eventually get breached probably and then they would be killed and had to fight to the death. Um, so it's basically what they had no other choice. They basically had to do, take this deal. Eins helps them. They he gets all the runesmiths in exchange, and that's the best for them. But I mean, they made sure, kind of like sure that at least there's nothing bad going on, right? No slavery because they basically ask, okay, we give you the, the runesmiths, but we want to check up, up on them in the future to see that they have a good life, basically, right? Uh, and I mean, it's basically what Ayn's plans anyway, right? He wants a, he wants a kingdom where everyone where everyone wants to be ruled over, where everyone wants to live and have a happy life. 
and for that he has to treat people good and give them a good life right so it's nothing that Ains wouldn't do right it's basically just as planned and then we have the scene with the dwarves where it's basically like he shows them something that is impossible for their standards which is 12 runes and uh, 20 runes and one weapon they only know six runes on one weapon and that's like 200 years ago where it was maybe like peak performance in rune crafting and Ains is like yeah come to my kingdom and improve to get to that point which is basically like similar to what he does with with Nephilia, right where it's like here they only know blue potions and I have this red potion which is like seen as the blood of God or something right because it's so red um and so he takes Nephilia and Nephilia improves has now instead of blue potions purple potions and slowly but surely improves until he gets maybe to the point of red potions which all improves the value of his kingdom because people will notice it, people will hear about it, and it basically just makes living there better, right? So they probably will flock towards him and want to live there because he has better technology, better weapons, better healing, and all that other stuff, and eventually he will just thrive in his kingdom because everyone wants to live there because everything is just above, way above average than the rest of the world. And so, yeah, but I guess next episode will be really interesting because we will see dragons or maybe at least one dragon. But in the intro, we saw four dragons, I think. And so that will be interesting. I guess that's like the most interesting part for the next episode. And I guess otherwise we will regain the capital and Gondor will take the book about runecrafting out of the treasury because it will ultimately help Eins more with the runecrafting if he gets that book anyways. And yeah. We are basically like halfway through the season by now and I guess it will be like 13 episodes like always. And there's still like mo lots more like the dragons. We still have much. We still didn't saw much of brain. We still have the from the intro the weird mecha guy with the gun with the machine gun or whatever. We still have um, the chick with the battle axe and the armor and the silver hair and blue eyes that fights the death knight in the capital it seems like so there's still more interesting stuff from the intro that will be interesting but yeah that's it for the episode i guess and if you like what you see leave a like subscribe or comment let me know what you think and thanks for watching until next time bye bye